Hello, everyone. Um, Tian Yupang from Tsinghua University. And uh, here uh, I will first introduce our teams. And here is uh, the list of our team members. And uh, I will, OK, go on. And uh, we get, uh, I will first introduce some work about, uh, of our team. We get three first places in all the three tracks in last year's NIPS competition. Uh, and NIPS is a top conference of machine learning. Uh, we have published three papers about our virtual examples on top conference of machine learning and computer vision. Besides, we also have a paper and a review of NIPS this year, and all the three initial review scores are accepted. Uh, here is a list of our publication. And today, I will introduce these two works. And the first work is boosting a virtual attacks with momentum. This is the attacking method uh, we used in last year on NIPS computation. Our virtual examples are ma maliciously generated examples to fool a machine learning model, but they are very similar to the original examples. I'll briefly introduce some previous attack methods and later introduce their advantages and disadvantages. Finding a non-target non virtual examples can be thought as an um, optimization problem. And we want to maximize the loose function of our virtual example with its true label subject to the required maximum distance between them. And the most famous one proposed by Goodfellow is the fast gradient sum method, and which approves to FGSM. And it calculates the gradient of the loose function with respect to the input and applies the sign of the gradient to the input. The iterative variant of FGSM applies the sign of the gradient Multiple, multiple times. Optimization-based method directly optimizes the distance between the virtual examples and the original examples minus the loops. And uh, <coughs> virtual examples have uh, demonstrated. Uh, I will use that. Okay. Uh, ha have demonstrated good transferability across models. And that is, the virtual example generated for one model can also fool another model. The transferability of our virtual examples enable black box attacks, which may cause real security issues in real world applications. Also, our virtual examples have score, uh, have cross data transferability, which is a universal virtual perturbation. However, there are some limitations of practical, practical black box attacks. We found that Existing attack methods cannot attack a black box uh, efficiently. For FGSM, it is fast and generous a words of example with good transferability, but the linearity assumption makes not, may not hold for large distortion, uh, and it, so it lacks the efficiency to attack a white box model. Thus, the success rate of black box attack is low, and iterative method has low transferability because it gradually moves the virtual examples to the gradient direction to maximize the loose function, which may overfit to the model's decision boundary. So the trade-off trade between transferability and attack ability makes black box attacks less effective. Here we have an experiment. We attack inception with three with different numbers of iteration. We measure the success rate of white box inception with three, the black box inception with four, v two, and risk nine one hundred fifty five fifty two. We know that the success rate decreases when increasing the number of iterations for black box attacks. Another way to attack a block box model is to build a substitute network to characterize the behaviors of the black box model. But this method require full prediction confidence and tremendous recoveries. It is hard to deploy for models trained on large scale data sites. And we cannot use this method in the computation because we are not allowed to query the defense submissions. So our solution is to elevate the trade-off between the transferability and the attackability. Recalls that uh, finding a virtual example can be regarded as a constraint optimization problem. So we can apply some useful technique in optimization to the virtual setting. Momentum method is a well adapted to accelerate gradient descent and help to escape from poor local optima. 
in SGD, it also helps to stabilize update direction. So we add the momentum term in the iterative method. Uh, and we propose a momentum iterative fast gradient sum method. This algorithm is very simple. We, we also calculate the gradient of the loose function with respect to the input in each uh, iteration. But we uh, calculate a vector gt in the gradient direction across iterations. In each iteration, we apply the sign of the vector to the adverse examples. Mu is the decay factor to control how much we trust the previous gradient. And the current gradient is normalized to by the L1 norm because we notice that the scale of the gradient in different iterations vary in magnitude. Uh, here are some results. Uh, we are taking supplement three, uh, just a lot of models. And um, uh, the success rate uh, and MI FGSM, which is our method, can take a white box model with near 100% success rate, just like IFGSM, but a foot and uh, black box model with much higher success rate. We also study the effects of the number of iterations on black box attacks. We also attack uh, inception rate three and measure, measure the success rate on several black box models. We can see that the success rates for attacking a black box model does not decrease when increasing the number of iterations. So our method can in some sense elevate the trade-off between the attackability and transferability. And another thing that is crucial for obtain, obtaining good results is to attack and ensemble models. The main assumption is that if an adversarial example remains adversarial for multiple models, it is more likely to be misclassified by other black box models. We propose to attack and ensemble models whose logics are fused together. We also compare the results of other ensemble methods, such as attacking an ensemble of models whose predictions or loops are fused, which show the results of attacking ensemble models. Ensemble in logic consistently outperform ensemble in predictions and ensemble in loops. And by applying the momentum iterative fast gradients uh, FGSM to an ensemble of models, we get very high success rate for black box attacks. For example, uh, for uh, by attacking inception with four in inception with 9v2 and risk 9152, the generated adversarial example can fool inception with three with a very high success rate. Now I uh, just finished the first work, and uh, this work is um, and this work is a uh, joint work with Chao Du and him, uh, just him and uh, professor uh, professor Jun Zhu. And in our work, we propose a new network architecture, which can return robust predictions in the adversarial setting. We name the new network as Max Mahalana based linear discriminant analysis networks, and which are private to MMLDA networks. And this uh, this uh, work just uh, published in uh, on SML, uh Yeah. Uh, first is about our our motivation. And uh, our motivation one is that. Almost all popular networks suffer from adversarial attacks where human imperceptible perturbation can mislead these high accuracy networks. And about our second motivation, note that our typical fifth world deep night consists of a nonlinear transformation part that maps the input to the hidden feature and a linear classifier part acting on the hidden feature to get the output. However, uh, most, most of the work focused on designing power from nonlinear transformation part like VGG and RIS9 and so on. And by contrast, the linear classifier part is underexplored, by which you already by default use some math regression. Therefore, our goal is to design a new network architecture for better performance in the adversarial setting. To achieve this, we decided to substitute a new linear classifier part for some mass regression. And by our method, it comes from two inspirations. And the first inspiration comes from Efron et al. They show that if the input distributes as a mixture of Gaussian, the, the linear discriminant analysis, which abrogates to LDA, is more efficient than logistic regression. Here, more efficient means that LDA needs less training data than LR to obtain certain error rates. 
However, in practice, uh, data points hardly distribute as a mature Gaussian in the input space. To solve this, we get inspiration too from the fact that neural networks are powerful. Power's work on deep generating models has demonstrated that a deep net can learn to transform a simple distribution, for example, a mixture of Gaussian or, or a Jessel Gaussian, to a complex data distribution. So we think the reverse direction should also be feasible, and this is actually what our method does in its nonlinear transformation part. Based on above analysis, in our method, we modeled the feature distribution as a mixture of Gaussian and then applies LDA on the feature to make predictions. Now a naturally raised question is that how to trace the Gaussian parameters? Uh, one at all, uh, well, uh, at all also models the feature distribution as a mixture of Gaussian. However, they trace the Gaussian parameters as actual, actual trainable variables. By contrast, we trace them as hyperparameters calculated by our algorithm, which can provide theoretical guarantee on the robustness. And the induced mixture of Gaussian model is named the Mahalanobis distribution, appropriate to MMD. And intuitively, uh, MMD makes the minimum uh, Mahalanobis distance between two Gaussian components maximum. Intuitive, uh, for example, uh, uh, Samples in different classes are separated the most when the distribution is MMD. Uh, when, when there are three classes, uh, the Gaussian means of MMD are the three vertexes of the equilateral triangle. And how does MMD relate to robustness? Here we first give the definition of the robustness. And the robustness on a point with label I is defined as the local minimum distance of it to an adversarial example with different label. And we further define the robustness of the classifier as minimum expected local distance. Then we get the relation between the expected local distance and the Gaussian parameters. Uh, here delta ij is the Mahalanobis distance between two Gaussian components of a label i and j in the mixture of Gaussian. And further, we find that the robustness can be approximately represented in this simple form. And recall the property of MMD, we can conclude that if the feature input distributes as uh, MMD, then the approximate robustness is maximized. Finally, it's our experiment results. We first test our method on normal examples. Our method achieves comparable performance with typical networks. Note that here we did not specially fine-tune any training hyperparameter for our method. Here we show the PSNE visualization on the test set of C410. We can find that our method results in, in it's more orderly distributed in the feature space. Here we show the accuracy and the iterative attacks. We test under three different values of perturbation, and the results show that our method can largely improve accuracy compared to a virtual training baselines, even with much less computational, even with much less computational cost. We also test the optimization-based CNW attack. The results show that the CNW attack has to add much larger perturbation to successfully attack our method. And uh, here, here the first row is a normal example, and the second row is all virtual noises crafted on the traditional SR networks. SR networks means soft mass regression networks, and the third row is the noise noises crafted on our method. We can find that our method can learn more robust features, such that the optimal attacking strategy that the CNW method finds is to weaken the pixels of the normal examples as a whole rather than adding meaningless noises as for SR networks. And besides, our method can have better performance on class by S data sites, which may be helpful in other areas like fairness. And finally, in conclusion, our method doesn't introduce actual computational cost. It can largely improve robustness with no use of accuracy on normal examples. 
and our method is quite easy to implement with only a few lines of code. And uh, finally, it is compatible with nearly all popular networks. Thank you. So, any question? Yeah, um, you, you know, you know Ga Gaussian distribution, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it has a, um, a power, power term, mm -hmm. uh -huh, and uh, it has a covariance matrix, and it has a mean. So the Mahalano based distance, uh, you, you actually, you can w wiki it. it. It has a wiki uh, PDF, and uh, it, it's, um, it does uh, some kind of distance, uh, just like uh, all that distance or uh, something like that. Uh, is to measure the uh, some similarity of two Gaussian distributions. So, any other question? <laughs> yes. During the CPF, are you using the same concept? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, actually, we want to use this, uh, but maybe this is still a secret because uh, we need to uh, attend another computer, but we can see something about it. But uh, it's not very scalable. Uh, I mean, if you want to uh, scale it to a very large data set like ImageNet, you need, to, uh, need, you need a lot of tricks on fine-tuning uh, training parameters, hyperparameters, like uh, learning rates or weight decays. But uh, we are not very good at it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So so we only test them on some uh, um, uh, small test uh, data set or media middle data set like say for turn or M M NIST, because we we do not need to fine tune any hyperparameters for our method. It can it can get a state of the art uh, performance. Yes. So, any other question? Okay. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.